throughout the day we breathe in different ways and when you learn to observe your your breathing just naturally as it is it's also a tool for you to realize during the day if you suddenly uh, begin to breathe quickly you know that something's going on maybe something yeah you're getting anxious about something and that's like a tip for you to know okay what's going on and maybe take a pause and, and see what's happening there what the practice gives you is this awareness and also it strengthens your equanimity so maybe before you used to react to very little things that are not important like i don't know like the bus being late or something like that and now those things are like who cares really laura from spain how are you doing today and welcome to dev Kill. hi thank you i'm good thank you for having me here uh, all good here in spain yeah oh. how are you well, very well. It's it's always good to be in a country like Spain, as it always is to be in a country like Mexico, where I am. So <laughs> both places can't complain, I'm sure. Yeah. So it's a pleasure to have you on, Laura. I thank you so much for this opportunity to speak with you. And I wanted to bring you on for our viewing audience, and our listening audience on the podcast platform, because I want to talk about this idea of managing stress. You know, it seems like you focus on that. We'll go into the many avenues in which you explore that. But I think especially... I guess since 2020, obviously the pandemic has caused a lot of people's anxieties, stresses, and the ability to manage that be very challenging. So I think you'll be able to give our audience really good insight into what you do and why you do it and be able to help them as well. So if we could please start off, could you please introduce yourself a little bit more, why mm -hmm. you love doing what you do and why you decided to embark on this journey to really help other people? Yeah, sure. Well, I worked in consulting finance for over eight years. So that's my background, uh, working on corporate. And in 2020, I realized I didn't want to do that anymore. I was super stressed, I had a lot of pressure. I was like, in a way, getting everything I always wanted, but then something was missing. I wasn't feeling fulfilled. And I was like, okay, this is not what I want to do anymore. And the plan was to go and do a volunteer uh, volunteering in Vietnam, but then the pandemic happened, so that didn't happen. And we got sort of trapped here in Spain. And I knew I wanted to do something to help, more meaningful to me, like helping people to live differently. And I began doing a bit of personal training and nutrition, and then I realized, no, this is... Well, I encountered uh, meditation, I started meditating, and I realized how much that changed my life and how transformative it was. And I knew that was like the key thing to help people live differently because it teaches you how to relate to everything around you in a different way, regardless of what's going on outside you, regardless of the circumstances in your life. And that's why I decided that I wanted to help people yeah, meditate and live more consciously, less to the outside and more inwardly. And that's what I do. Is that what you do full time now? Yeah, it's what I do full time. And yeah, mainly I work with people who are where I was, like working corporate or like jobs where they have a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, not much time for themselves because it's all work, work, work and go, go, go. And, you know, this space of living that is yeah, quick and, and always striving for more and more and more. And that's mainly the, the people I work with because I have been there and I know what that was and I burned out, I guess. And I believe that if I knew then what I know now, and, I, and if I had the tools that I have now, maybe I would have been happier in that space and maybe I would have found a way to make it work for me instead of feel that work was everything in my life and I didn't have time for me or my family or friends or whatever. So I, I want to stay on the thread of meditation because I've told my story about that in different episodes, but... You know, uh, I would say, I think it was around 2017, 2018, I really got more heavily involved in, you know, meditating and praying more, both things kind of, in because kind of one is becoming empty and one is almost uh, speaking in a way. So, you know, I think they complement each other in different ways. Um, 
but in particular with meditation, like for me and my, just to reiterate a little bit, my experience very briefly, you know, I think it was pivotal how it changed my life because when you, you know, cause around that time I was listening to Eckhart Tolle and a lot of other people mm -hmm. as well about that state of nothingness. But when I had that was in that sort of state of just really, really like not having anything go through me like a thought or anything like that and just becoming totally like i think the key was silence right the key mm -hmm. is just becoming really attuned to the silence but the silence is profound i i had a really personal kind of profound experience with that and it did change everything about how i think and feel about things I, although the way i am day to day is not so much attuned to that and i wish it was but it having had experience that did really change the way I think and feel, I would say overall. Um, can you explain a little bit, what does meditation really do to you as a person, to your mind, to your body and everything else on a day-to-day -day basis? Okay. So the, the sort of the meditation that I practice is Vipassana meditation. It's a meditation that um it's about observing the sensations in your body it's no no words no mantras no visualizations it's very like some people call it passive meditation i don't know it's just observing the sensations in your body and i think the mo well apart from all the benefits like it reduces stress and it helps you feel calmer and sleep better and improves your focus and all these things that we know I think the key thing for me with meditation is that it allows me to create a space between what's happening around me and how I react or respond to what's happening. So it allows me to relate to those things in a different way instead of just snapping or getting stressed or panicking because something is going wrong or whatever. It just allows me to take a step back and see what's going on and see it with perspective and be like, okay, now how I want to respond to this? How am I going to relate to this? What am I going to do with it? And do it from a place of being calm and, and then, yeah, responding more functionally, more consciously. And also the other key thing that meditation, I believe, helps and is great for is being more present in your life day to day. Like most of the time, we're not aware of what we're doing or why we're doing it. We just do it. We just go with emotions, we're in auto autopilot, right? And meditation helps you be more aware and take life more slowly, but not slowly in a way of you're not engaged, but it's actually the opposite. You're completely engaged with what you're doing and you're there and you don't need to rush. And yeah, it allows you to be really present with what you're doing. I think people sometimes when they approach meditation, look at it a bit mechanical because the, the idea is like your mind's not really active either. Right. So in a certain way, so like when you speak to clients about how to like meditate properly, how do you get away from like the mechanical part of it? Like, okay, you must do this. You must not do this breathe, but then, you know, be aware, you know, but so your mind's like trying to process what to do and what not to do at the same mm -hmm. time. So, you know, how do you kind of go about it so people are doing it properly and not over mechanically? So I start very small, right? We, we start with just doing maybe a couple of minutes observing your breath and that's all you have to do. And if you think at it that way, instead of looking at sensations or anything, just your breath starting there and learning to observe the breath in your body, how your body is feeling, and yeah, I think it, it's just observing that and being aware. And also like every time that your mind go, like you have a thought and you start thinking about your to-do list or whatever it is, just bringing it back without stressing, without freaking out because, oh, I'm doing this wrong or whatever. It's just trying to accept, take everything as it comes and accept it as it comes without any expectations. I think the key is just sitting without any expectation of this should be this way or this other way it's just observing so it's i get what you're saying about mechanical but i think is it's not it's just it's just being there and it sounds not so easy maybe if you explain it this way but it's just taking everything as it comes and observing it and not having any expectation of how the practice should be that's the thing it's just 
like you're saying, it's just really not overthinking and just do it, you know? And like, uh, you know, when I had the experience I did, I, I got more into the understanding, like, re like investigation of breathing, especially in that. And I just, you know, Wim Hof was someone that I pay attention mm -hmm. to re in that manner in, cer in a certain way, but then many other people as well. But the breath itself is just so fundamental on our day to day well being, because, you know, I don't, th I think we take for granted just breathing in general, but mm -hmm. the way in which we breathe can overall throughout the day really, really uh, have a, a positive or really detrimental effect on our state of being. And we need, we should, like you're saying, be aware and pay attention to that. So, what kind of tips or insights do you give your clients as to really how to breathe and be aware of that throughout the day? Yeah, totally. Uh... I actually try, what I tell them is actually don't try to control your breath. Don't try to do deep breaths or short breaths or, or anything. Just let it be as it is, like naturally, and just observe it. And I think that's key because, as you were saying, throughout the day, we breathe in different ways. And when you learn to observe your, your breathing just naturally as it is, it's also a tool for you to realize during the day if you suddenly uh, begin to breathe quickly, you know that something's going on. Maybe something, yeah, you're getting anxious about something. And that's like a tip for you to know, okay, what's going on? And maybe take a pause and, and see what's happening there. So, yeah, actually, just it's just observing the breath naturally. It's different when maybe you want to come down and maybe maybe you have a meeting and what you want to do is actually yeah, calm your nervous system for that meeting and be more grounded in there, then yes, I do like uh, breathing shorter than you breathe out, right? Inhale and then exhale in a longer time. But in general, when it's meditation, just five minutes, I would just observe naturally as it comes because it gives also information to you about what you're feeling, what you're thinking, etc. I noticed on your Instagram, it says, if I'm reading this right, thousand plus hours of meditation practice. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So I'm really curious, having gone through let's, that a thousand hours, like how have you changed for yourself personally? And what is it that that change has presented to yourself and the way you see life? Okay. So the first thing, just to clarify, the, all those hours is mainly because I've done uh, several courses, Vipassana courses, which are like 10 day, a 10 day silent retreat with over 10 hours meditating every single day. And that was to me like the most transform transformational experience I did. And it helped me connect to myself in a way I hadn't connected before. And it helped me realize so many things that were in me and that I wasn't able to see because I was so worried with the outside. I was so worried about being successful, about uh, yeah, performing good at my job and making money, whatever, all these things. And I was so worried or what other people think. And I was so worried about those things that I was disconnected from me. So meditation has helped me connect to me, to what I really want. And basically see things from a different point of view just relate to everything in a different way I now don't have all the expectations in life that I used to have I now don't push myself the way I used to push me I I'm more connected to what is important to me and I of course I care about what other people think right but it's it's different I can see and also I can take those things around me differently. I think the key thing that meditation gives you is that inner peace and inner harmony and knowing that no matter what goes around you, right or wrong, you have you and you can stay calm and you can, you're okay. Like your peace, your happiness, everything doesn't depend from everything around, but it just depends on you. So that's the key thing I'd say, yeah. Do you find that becomes challenging at times? Like for me, I, I, when I had the experience I did a few years ago, there were, I would say like a few weeks where I was just so calm and chill. I was like, you know, nothing stuck to me, like affected me. I was just like, yeah, yeah. okay, whatever. You know, and I, it was weird. I could only listen. I, well, the only type of thing 
because I listen to a lot of music, the only type of music that I really wanted to or desired to listen at that time was like classical music and some kind of like um, sound related uh, music, you know, no, not mm -hmm. like the rock and stuff that I usually listen to. But, um, you know, so that was a huge thing that like stuck with me for a while. But then as days went on, I went back to, you know, certain stresses and preoccupations, stuff like that. Although I tried to balance it out as best I could. So, um, do you find from time to time that I, because what I've spent time listening to and paying attention to really a lot in this arena for many years now is that really the goal is just like not having so many things become attached to you, like detachment, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Detachment from a certain thought, detachment from a certain um, th way of thinking, of of circumstances, people, whatever, the things you do, et cetera, right? So mm -hmm. for me, even though I don't do it as well and I want to, you know, personally, do you um, find that you you even still even kind of be an expert now in this in the space, like, from time to time feel that I, cause I visualize it in my head, like things stick in you. And it's like those things when, when I was a kid, especially like you throw against the wall and it kind of slimes down the wall, you know, very slowly. That's the kind of visualization I have with it. Mm -hmm. Do you find that still happening to you in certain ways and how do you manage it when it happens? Yeah, it definitely happens. It definitely 100% happens. And the only thing is I just, I guess it, it still happens, but I become aware of it earlier than I used to before. And when I do become aware of it now, I can respond and I can change how I'm feeling. But of course it happens. It's just that's why it's so key to keep having the practice because I think sometimes it, like maybe you go to a retreat or something and you, yeah, you get out of there and you're like, oh, this, everything is great and you're all love and light and everything. And you know, it's, that's not real. So yeah, it just every things will still happen. It's just becoming aware. And I think what the practice gives you is this awareness and also it strengthens your equanimity. So maybe before you used to react to very little things that are not important, like I don't know, like the bus being late or something like that. And now those things are like, who cares really? And it's just it's just becoming aware. I know it sounds a bit simple, like I, I cannot give you a better answer than that. It's just becoming aware. And when you become aware, even if you have you have been like angry or something for about two hours, if you now become aware, you know, okay, I'm I'm angry because I am attached to this thought or whatever, or I'm having this thought, or I'm thinking that that person is doing something to me when in reality they just said something and I'm taking it totally personally. Okay, now you can let go. You can just release that anger, you know. So it's just the strengthening your awareness, and that's done through practice. But, but yeah, I cannot tell you that just by meditating. I'm never, I never get stressed. I never get angry. I never get any of that because that would be a lie. That's for sure. Uh, and and I don't think you should repress those feelings either, right? Because if you're mm -hmm. like the the thing that was difficult for me, like having the experience I did some years ago. It's like I always wanted to feel like that, and that, I don't think that's possible, you know, because it's a cert. There was like a certain euphoria that overwhelmed me, you could say, mm -hmm. like, and I, you know, um, whether some might say it's chemical, some might say it's this or that, but whatever it was, I felt great. So <laughs> I don't, yeah. I really don't care. But the point is, like, you know, as time has transpired since that that moment and where I am now at this point in life, you know. I, for me personally, I don't, I don't feel like I'm trying to get to a euphoric sense of being each and every day. I'm just trying to feel like, uh, this is a really bad example probably, but like the big Lebowski, you know, like the, this movie from the nineties, you know, <laughs> like just, you know, not, not doing the intakes of what he does, but just like that kind of that easiness, that, that easygoingness. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of that, what you're saying, especially bringing awareness into your day to day, I think and I, I concur with that. I think that's really the biggest thing is because if we don't do that, our emotions get over, overwhelm us, our compulsivities overwhelm us, you know, and yeah. I think people take too much. Personally, I think that people over 
rely on their emotions. So emotions really aren't mm -hmm. everything we are. They're just sort of ingrained in us, right? We have to be aware of what that is rather than just let it feed itself, right? So um, yeah. the awareness is really, really the big thing, I think. And if you do do that, then I think really those ways in which that stress feels on your body can be diminished a little bit. Right. Or, or at least you, you, the thing is, I want to ask you this in that regard, like, like any feeling that comes to you, should you really feel it no matter what, or like when you recognize you're going to feel anger, or recognize you're going to feel stress or recognize you can feel whatever it is, should you kind of have that recognition of what that is that's going on with you and then decide how you act on that kind of thing rather than yes. totally suppress it? Yeah, exactly. I don't think it's about suppressing. I think it's, as you were saying, like, be aware of it and then choose how you want to respond to it. Like, if you're getting angry at your wife for whatever she said, something to you, whatever, just being aware of that and then choose how you want to respond. It's as simple as that. Like, it's this awareness because I think sometimes we just want to change things and you cannot change what you're not aware of. So if you want to change... Yeah, you want to feel less angry by by repressing it that's not going to happen because eventually something something will happen and you will just explode and everything will come out in a worse way so you just need to feel it but i think also what people get confused by is like feeling it is just expressing it and just um you know fighting with someone whatever no you can feel it you can feel the anger and you can choose not to do anything with it and just feel it and let it pass and sit down and maybe spend, you know, 20 minutes there sitting and feeling it and yet know that it's something with you and you don't need to do anything with that anger. But it's not repressing it, it's completely feeling it and eventually it will just go because everything is impermanent as well. This is one of the other key teachings from meditation, right? So it's just feeling it, observing it, and let it pass or choose to have a conversation with someone about what uh, you didn't like or what they said or what they did but from what place are you having that conversation are you having it from anger or can you wait feel that anger and when it's gone then have a conversation from a different place from a place of feeling calm and from a place of love but expressing and saying look I didn't like this because that and that and that and it made me feel like that you know yeah 100% um, Lord, what, how important is environment to your overall state of being that you've come to recognize? Like for, for me, when I, you know, and I can't always have this sort of dream I have, I think, oh, maybe, well, dream is like, you know, hoping that something will come to pass, I guess. But, um, like when I go to Acapulco, which is kind of close to Mexico city by plane, when I'm there and I'm just like in front of the ocean, I just, I, I like, I don't feel anything, you know, I'm just, well, I do feel things, but I don't, I don't feel like what I maybe would in a certain day to day in the city, that kind of thing. How important is that from what you know and have recognized as the importance for overall well-being day to day to be and have a good environment around you? Yeah, it's key. Spending time in nature and, and being, yeah, being in nature is so important. It fills you, I think it helps you with feeling connected and realizing that you are not isolated like you are connected to everything and we are all connected really and we are all connected to nature and we are so small at the same time and you being there it feels it makes you feel that connection it helps with gratitude with feeling grounded with appreciating things in a different way so yeah i to me it's key to spend at least 20 times in i 20 times sorry 20 minutes walking in nature um without listening to a podcast or music or, any, or anything you know just being there just taking it all in and doing nothing and just being there and that's almost a sort of meditation as well it, it's not like the formal meditation of sitting down but it also brings so many benefits and especially how it makes you feel so i think it helps but I also think that you cannot use your environment as an excuse to not try and feel better or to say, no, I cannot meditate because I live next to a busy road and it's uh, noisy and blah, blah, blah. No, like you can do things as well. Of course, it helps if you live near the mountains or the sea or whatever, but it's not a limitation. Yeah, because there's that famous... Um... 
I don't know if it's ex- not expression, but visualization of the the Buddhist monks in and Times Square and feeling at totally at peace kind of thing, you know? So, mm, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it's true. It's like you, you have, you having the ability to manifest a certain inner calm, no matter what is going on around you and you're good with it. That, that would be a quite incredible thing. And yeah, that's the key thing. Yeah. Laura, what, what have some of your clients from the ones you've been able to help, what have they said to you as far as, um, how they've changed and how they felt better, especially like managing stress. Or have you they given you any insight into the way in which you helped them and how their life has changed? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think most. Uh, yeah, the key thing, most of the one that repeats the most are two are like the taking a step back and seeing things from a different place because I think um, when you're there stressed and we and you're working and you have to do all these things and get everything done and have this meeting and that other thing and blah 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 you get very stressed and you might get a bit anxious and people with meditation they learn to take a step back and see things from a different perspective and uh yeah relativize everything that is happening to them and see that okay it's not so serious if i if this meeting doesn't go perfectly or whatever and the other thing is um yeah not getting so worried about the little things you know because we get so stressed sometimes about very simple things that really no one cares about and only you care about and it's just relating to those things differently so i think people are learning how you don't also how you don't need to commit a very long a very yeah very long time in your day to just relate differently to all these difficulties or stressors in your day and i want to ask you related to what you just said in a certain way because when your taglines on your social media is also do less be more and Mm -hmm. it kind of feeds into a little bit of the conversation we're having now like because the thing is when you let things affect you they become overwhelming it feels like a humongous stone on your mind your Mm -hmm. chest Mm -hmm. all throughout your body so what does that mean to you and how you communicate that to other people? Like, like do less and be more. What does that really mean according to you? Yeah, it's that is doing less. Like we spend all the time, all day doing things and we forget about just being, about just being there. And being there can be just being like in meditation where just, you're just being, sitting still and being there. Or it can be being in nature, doing nothing. Even if you're walking, but you know, not doing things. It's learning to stop this need to being productive all the time. The need of, you have, yeah, we have this uh, thought because it's just the thought that we have to be productive all the time. We have to be doing something. I, I used to be like, I'm cooking and I'm listening to a podcast because I need to learn something. No, you don't. You can be just cooking and yeah you're doing something but you're being there you're being in the action of cooking you're not to do, 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 and you know so it's it's finding more moments of stillness in your life and but again it doesn't have always to be just sitting in meditation it can be being in nature doing nothing or sitting at, in, on your bed doing nothing but finding these moments of being silent with no noise uh, not doing anything and just being with yourself and, and feeling your body, feeling what's going on with you because most of the time we're disconnected from that. We don't know if we're sad, if we're happy, if we're angry, if we're hungry. We don't know any of that because we're just doing. So that's what it is. Oh, excellent. And Laura, only have time for one more question. And I want to ask you, what what what's the one last thing you can leave our audience to think about when it comes in general to stress and whether or not it's something that they quote unquote have to worry about? Like what I mean is that like a word of encouragement, like how can like if someone's just totally overwhelmed with so many things uh going on in their life, or maybe one particular thing that just is draining them and emotionally and physically in every which way, what's this like a last word of phrase encouragement that you could leave them just on their outlook of that situation or distress in general well i would say two things first take a pause and come back to your body observe your breath and stop try to stop thinking 
and you can stop thinking when you observe your breath, even if it's for two seconds, when you're observing your breath, you're not thinking because you cannot do both things at the same time. So that would be the first thing and it already helps you take a mini step back or take like create a small space between the situation and you. And the second thing is this social pass, right? Like everything is impermanent. And when you're in there and it's and it's happening, you cannot see that, but it's true. And you can think about all the times that difficult situations have happened in your life as well. And, and they ended and then something better came. So it's just remembering that. And I know it's hard because you're there and and you're there and you cannot get out of there but that's why going into your body by just observing your breath it will help you and take this space and then think okay sooner or later it is going to end and it will happen so that's for sure like that's that's a big the only certain thing I'd say that we have right that everything changes and everything nothing is forever so that's great. It's really important to remember that as well, you know, just that impermanence of everything and mm -hmm. this too shall pass just like clouds in the sky and just, you know, understanding, mm -hmm. like you said, I think one of the biggest things that people can take away from this conversation is just being aware, you know, don't let your compulsivities and your emotions override you and just step back from, you know, kind of have mm -hmm. this out of body experience in a way and just kind of look at what you're doing and what's going on and put in a little bit of perspective and then go back into it. You know, maybe you'll feel and react to it or approach it differently. So yeah. Laura, where can our audience follow you, work with you, connect with you, all of it? Can you please leave them all your contact? Well, not all, but just certain <laughs> ways in which they can follow you and, and even work with you if possible. Yeah, sure. Uh, my Instagram is where I'm most active. Um, so it's Laura underscore being, B-E-I-N-G. And then my website is lauraving.com. And yeah, that's it. And also my LinkedIn, but mostly I'm mostly active on Instagram. And then on my website, you will find different ways of working with me. Perfect. So I encourage all of our viewing, listening audience. We'll include all the information, Laura, in the description, the pinned comments, show notes everywhere that we always uh, post and pin everything. So make sure to connect with her, follow her, and you know, if you're able to work with her and I'm sure it'll be really transformation in your life. So Laura, thank you so much for being on Dev Kilo. It was an honor and we appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you all in the next episode, everyone. And take care and have a great day.